gosh, I love movies. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Real Good Movies. I'm your host, Will Beeman, and today we're going to be talking about the 95th annual, annual Academy Awards, where we will give our thoughts on some of the major categories up for nomination, as well as who we think will win and who we want to win. But before we get into that, allow me to introduce our guest for today's show from the Cinema Center, Kylie Bowers. Hello. Kylie, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the Real Good Movies set. Um, Usually there's somebody else here, but today it's all about you. So you were the very special guest for the Oscars episode. I'm excited. Um, so I figured basically how we can just make this work is I've picked out some of the major categories because just for time, we can't go through all of them, obviously. Right. And um, we'll just talk about the nominations. Um, and then kind of like I said in the intro, who you want to win, who you think will win. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll just have a good conversation from there. All right, let's get into it. So... We'll start it off with the best animated feature, mm -hmm. which the nominations for that category are Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, mm -hmm. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. So what are your thoughts on those nominees? Who do you want to win? Who do you think will win? So starting out with who I, who I personally want to win, um, Pinocchio for me is definitely stole my heart. Um, I'm a big fan of stop motion. Um, a lot of research into the movie too kind of told me a lot about it, how much effort and time and um, passion was put into that movie. I, I really appreciated it and I found it very enjoyable. Um, in terms of which one I think will probably win, I, I really think Marcel the Shell um, You think that's the yeah. One? yeah. Sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought, but I feel like a lot of people were really putting a lot of emphasis on that movie. Um, that is actually one on the list that I have not seen. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, what are some of your thoughts? Um, I mean, I was surprised when the nominations came out that the Sea Beast got one because I saw that mm. as a Netflix film, and I didn't actually think it was all that spectacular. So it was really surprising to see that pop up there. But um, I'm with you where. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio was incredible to me. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of my favorite filmmakers, so I'm a little biased in a way where I don't really think he can go wrong. But yeah. I, I can agree with you that I think Marcel the Shell has some momentum uh, going in towards it. I had a lot of debates with people I know about if I even should have technically qualified as animation because there's so much live action right. in it. Um, but I think I want and I think... Guillermo del Toro will end up winning this one. You think? Uh, yeah, I think he'll he'll take home another Oscar, um, and well-deserved, because he's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so we'll roll right into the next category here, which is Best Supporting Actress, mm -hmm. and the nominees for that were Angela Bassett for her role in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Hong Chao for The Whale, uh, Carrie Condon um, for The Banshees of Anna Sharon, Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, and Stephanie uh, Joe for the same film. Um, so it was nice to see that there was two nominees from one movie in this category. Mm -hmm. um, but of what you have seen, same thing as animation. Who? Do, what do you think? Who do you think will win? Who do you want to win? So for this one, I actually, um, I, I'm pulling for um, Stephanie with, everything everywhere all at once I really think it says a lot too that there are two supporting actresses from the same movie that were nominated for mm -hmm. this category um, so and honestly I think Stephanie has a really good chance of winning the Oscar for this as well so um, but that movie across we'll, we'll get more into that later but overall that was that's definitely one of my favorite movies of this past year so um, yeah I, I definitely think Stephanie um, well I'm sorry what was her last name I think it's pronounced Joe okay yeah, it was a great, and it was great to see her. I, I don't know of any other movies that she's been in. It was great to kind of see um, her come out in this movie and just hit the ground running. And um, she did a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's nice because it kind of qualifies her in a way as like a breakout role as well. So. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I'm with you where I'm pulling for her to win. I think she gave the best performance out of mm -hmm. the the actresses she's going against. Um, 
I'm glad Jamie Lee Curtis got the nod because I saw <laughs> Halloween Ends and thought that movie was terrible. So mm. I'm glad that she was getting recognized for her good performance of last year. Yeah. She, um, that, she did incredible in that movie. Yeah. She, it was so entertaining and just so captivating to watch her. Just so She played so many different personalities in that movie, too. It was so much fun to watch. Right. So. And, and so, like, I want Stephanie to win. Mm -hmm. I think she does have a chance, but I feel like they're going to give Angela Bassett the Oscar because she's been winning the other awards as well. Yeah. Because... I, I didn't think Black Panther 2 was as good as the first one, mm -hmm. but her performance in it outshines everything that's in that movie. So That's very true. I, I can see how that would go, and that would give a Marvel movie one of its first major Oscar wins. Which, mm -hmm. So I think it, it might be time for for her to win as well but we'll we'll see how that one plays out that's a category i'm i'm interested to see who ends up winning mm -hmm. um and a countering supporting actress we have supporting actor with brennan gleason from the banshees of inishirin brian tyree henry from causeway uh judd hirsch from the fablemans barry keegan also from banshees of inishirin and kihi kwan from everything everywhere all at once um I'll let you go first yet again, but I think I might have a, an inkling on where you're leaning on this one. Yeah, I so uh, again, um, I I just the acting and everything everywhere all at once was just really outstanding for me. Um, Banshees of Inisherin is actually a movie that's on my list. I'm really behind the curve on that one. I haven't seen it yet, but I have heard nothing but incredible things mm -hmm. about that movie either. So um, it doesn't really surprise me to see that there are two nominations for that movie um, on the nominee list as well. Um, but yeah, I I would again lean towards the acting and everything everywhere all at once in my opinion. Yeah, I I want Kihi Kwan to win real bad. I think mm. I think his story is great. I think him as a person is great. I thought mm -hmm. he was great in the movie. Um, his Golden Globe speech after he won like made me cry. So I can only <laughs> imagine what his a Oscar speech would be like, and uh -huh. and I want to see that come to fruition. Um, I'm really glad that Barry Keegan, though, is kind of blowing up, though, because mm. I think he's a really talented actor and has been for a while, and he's been kind of overlooked, so I'm glad he's starting to get his due. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious why they picked Judd Hirsch from The Fablemans for the supporting actor and not Paul Dano, mm. because I thought Paul Dano was great in The Fablemans, and he's also spectacular as the Riddler in The Batman, so I think those were two roles that... He should have gotten the nod for and I mm -hmm. guess in my opinion as a snub there were a couple of those this mm -hmm. year for sure um but. but but yeah I think the the race is definitely between um Key and Brennan Gleason mm. uh Brian Tyree Henry I have nothing against but I didn't see Causeway or or heard of it so oh. <laughs> there's <laughs> so uh, sure. but I, I gotta check it out though because it was yeah. nominated so that there must be something behind it mm -hmm. um so then we'll go to the best lead actress category now with Kate Blanchett and Tar, Ana de Armas uh, for Bl her playing Marilyn uh, Monroe in Blonde, Andrea Rosenborough for Two Leslie, Michelle Williams for The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, take it away once again. Sure. So this one is actually kind of tough for me to decide. Um, you know, looking at... Uh, Specifically with Tar, that movie was really interesting when I was learning more about it. Kate Blanchett, mm -hmm. she actually spent two years studying conducting for that movie. Oh, wow. Um, and watching it, it, that was such an entertaining movie to watch, and she gave such an interesting perspective. It's hard not to love Kate Blanchett in any mm -hmm. movie that you see her in. Um, and in terms of acting, I, I really thought she did a wonderful job. Um, but then again, going in to, with Michelle Yeoh with Everything Everywhere All at Once, that's just such a hard movie to um, overlook. And she did such a wonderful job. Michelle Yeoh really does a great job with everything that she does. Um, to Leslie was another one that I think kind of caught everyone by surprise with the nomination for that. Um, but the, the acting in that movie was... Um, that, you know, being at Cinema Center, sometimes you see movies that... Um, they're kind of harder to watch. I think To Leslie is one of those movies and sometimes, you know, people actually have a hard time watching it as well. And that's one of those movies where you watch it and you kind of almost have an unenjoyable experience because of how well she puts you into that situation and you see mm -hmm. her story. Um, 
overall, I think my pick, it's honestly kind of a, a mix between Kate Blanchett and Michelle Yeoh. Um, I think Michelle Yeoh will win, you know, especially after the Golden Globes, um, and it's well deserved. Um, but I really think that Kate Blanchett is also very deserving of this role too, just because of all of the effort and um, expertise and research that had to go into that role for her to mm -hmm. be able to do it effectively. Yeah, this is actually arguably one of the most stacked categories of this award show because Kate Blanchett is still one of those actresses that every role she plays, she's so good at it that you mm -hmm. just believe she's that person. You don't see mm -hmm. Kate Blanchett in those films, you see the character she's playing. Mm -hmm. And that's a skill that is very hard to accomplish with how many films she's been in to be able to accomplish something like that. Right. And um, Michelle Williams was fantastic in The Fablemans as the mother in that film, and I'm really glad she's getting the recognition that she deserves for that role. But um, it's definitely a race between Kate and Michelle Yeoh for mm -hmm. Everything Everywhere. And it's kind of a corn, coin flip, but I'm on the Everything Everywhere bandwagon and really <laughs> want to see them sweep as many of the yeah. awards as they can. So that's who I'm pulling for, mm -hmm. but it, it won't shock me at all if Kate ends up taking mm -hmm. that home as well. But yeah, but well, what a loaded category, though. And fun fact, too, and you know Kate Blanchett, she plays, um, oh, was it Spinelli, the monkey in Pinocchio? Oh, yes. Yes, that was really fun. I was watching like a documentary behind the scenes with that, and she was talking to Guillermo del Toro and was like, please put me in Pinocchio. I'll do anything. He was like, well, I've got a monkey, and she's like, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> so. so the next category I have here is Best Lead Actor, mm. um, which has Austin Butler uh, for Elvis playing the king himself, uh, Colin Farrell for Banshees of Inisherin. Uh, Brendan Fraser for The Whale, Paul Mescal for his role in After Sun, and Bill Nye for, um, I can't read my writing on what his film is called, but I'll put it up in the lower <laughs> thirds, because um, it's one of those that I also hadn't heard of before he mm. got nominated for it, so it, it's going to be on my radar, but I, oh, it's Living, that's right, it came to me while we were ah. here, um, but yeah, so um, I'll toss it to you, only because I think the way every awards program has gone so far is Austin Butler has just won easily and he'll mm. probably win the Oscar as well. I didn't see Elvis because frankly, I don't have an sure. interest in Elvis, but I'm going to watch it if he does take home the Oscar, just cause I kind of feel like I need to see what all the hubbub is about. Mm -hmm. But cause like he concentrated on that role so hard that he isn't even able to talk normally without sounding like Elvis yet. So he really put the work into it. Talk about method acting. Yeah, yeah. And I, I of course, want Brendan Fraser to win for his performance in The Whale because mm -hmm. he's just sublime in that film. And I think he has another one of those stories in Hollywood that he really has earned this yeah. after all these years. And I think it's time he gets his recognition as well. Um, but what do you think about this category? So I, my two that I'm really rooting for are Elvis and The Whale, the two that you had specifically talked about. With Elvis, that was a movie I was kind of not pressured into watching, but I was like, okay, I don't necessarily know if I would watch this regularly, but it has so much momentum behind it mm -hmm. that I sat down and watched it, and I was in awe. He really does an incredible job of you watch it, and it feels like you are watching Elvis. Um, you know, from the voice to the acting to um, just everything about him. He does, it, it is an incredible movie, and he, he does a superb job. Um, Well-deserved, I think, um, especially for a movie with such a niche role like that. I mean, how many people, you have Elvis impersonators, but I mean, this is just such a, a deep dive uh, he does a great job. And, and, I really, and I think he did the singing, too, in this one as well, right? It wouldn't, I mean, it's hard yeah. to tell because okay. it, it sounds so similar. Yeah. But, yes, I, that wouldn't surprise me, um, I think, in a lot of movies where um, there's, like, a recreation of a band. Sometimes they'll have new vocals created and new music made. But it sounds so similar. Mm -hmm. um, but Brendan Fraser in The Whale, you know, I know him from a kid in movies like... Um, like The Mummy and things like that where, you know, they're not necessarily as serious of acting roles as this movie is. And I'm on the bandwagon with you of 
this is such a well-deserved nomination for him. Um, and finally for him to kind of have his moment, um, I, I would really love it to see him take the Oscar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially just with everything he's gone through in the last several years. And I mean, a lot of people kind of forget because his, his biggest movies are 20 plus years old at this mm -hmm. point, but he really was like, for the millennial generation up, like that generation's Chris Pratt, basically. Like they yeah. played very similar roles mm -hmm. and like, you, if they would have made Guardians of the Galaxy back then, he probably would have been <laughs> Star-Lord. And um, it's just really great to see him back in the Hollywood spotlight. And he seems to be, he seems to have like that spark back in him. And mm -hmm. I just, I just hope it, it ends up happening for him. Mm -hmm. um, the next category that I have on here is another loaded category that I, I just struggle to try and debate with. And that's the best director. And that's got Martin McDonough for Banshees of Inishirin, The Daniels for Everything Everywhere All at Once, Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans, Todd Field for Tar, and Ruben Ostlund for Triangle of Sadness. So what are your thoughts on this loaded heavyweight category? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, that's, it's so difficult because I've, they're all great and qualified and deserving in their own ways. Um, I think for me, per I don't even know how I would pick who I think would be the most deserving or who I think should win. Um, you know, I guess everything everywhere all at once. Again, it would be great to see that movie win. Um, there's also, a, I don't know if you noticed, there's like a little snip clip in that movie where um, it's the, she's actually holding an Oscar in one of the scenes. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be great to see that movie kind of sweep the Oscars. But, you know, again, um, there's a lot of great movies on that list. So um, I, what do you think? Um, well, personally, because, like, there's two directors. Like, I love Guillermo del, Guillermo del Toro, don't get me wrong, but there's mm -hmm. two directors that I would take a bullet for, and that's Steven Spielberg <laughs> and George Lucas. It's hard and, not to, yeah, with yeah, Steven Spielberg so on there. So for, for Steven, especially with The Fablemans, I think was a return to form that he hasn't had in a while. It's a very personal film. It's a very honest film. Um, it's the most heart that he's put into a film in a long time, and it's a true story, which makes it even better. Well, based on a true story, because it's based on his life. But So I would love to see Steven take this home, but I really do think it's the Daniels year with everything everywhere, and I think it's a tremendous accomplishment that they're able to get this in just their, it's either their second or third feature. I, I can't remember if Swiss Army Man was their debut or their sophomore mm. effort, but it's just crazy to think that the people who directed the Turn Down For What music video are going to be Oscar winning directors <laughs> because their style and just the absurdity has uh -huh. translated to feature filmmaking so perfectly mm -hmm. that I think winning this Oscar will cement their place as kind of the ones leading this charge in the new generation of directors mm -hmm. that we'll see for 20 or 30 more years. And I, I don't think it could happen to a better pair of directors. I think it's fantastic. I know inevitably we'll get to that point where they'll start making films without each other and that'll mm. be a sad day, but hopefully they can keep their, their friendship the way that they have. So they at least come back every few years to keep making stuff. So mm. I think they'll win. I do kind of want them to win. My heart's always going to want Steven to win when he's nominated <laughs> though, but I'm hoping with the Fableman success and everything like that, we can convince George Lucas to come out of retirement and make another personal <laughs> film because I, I'm ready for that emotionally for sure. Mm. Um, and, and naturally, Best Director is going to kind of tie into who we think for Best Picture. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a big category. Um, some of them were surprises to me that they got the big picture nod, but All Quiet on the Western Front is nominated in there. Mm -hmm. Avatar Way of the Water, The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. So mm. um, pretty neat to see two blockbusters in there when it's been a pretty vacant category for blockbusters for a long time. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on this selection of films here for Best Picture? I think it's 
pretty well-rounded, and I definitely think that it's also a hard decision. Um, one that kind of surprised me, and I'm curious to know what you think too, is Triangle of Sadness kind of got a couple nominations. Um, that movie was so much fun to watch, mm -hmm. uh, and it was so <laughs> kind of chaotic, but I think part of that is what makes it such a good movie. Right. Um, and so I, I think that's kind of an underdog too. I, I really enjoyed that movie. I was excited to see it nominated for Best Director and Best Picture as well. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, I, it's just, it's hard to pick again. I think <laughs> if I, if I had to go, I would like to see everything everywhere all at once kind of you know, yeah. I think it's well-deserving. Yeah. yeah, and I think part of it just kind of goes to show, too, with the, abs you called it absurdity. I don't like to necessarily say absurdity, but there are some things in that movie that are a bit um, obscure or, um, you know, a little bit different. And I took that as one way. Um, some other people that I've watched the movie with kind of took it another way, but mm -hmm. I, I kind of find the absurdity of it all kind of cohesive with the whole topic. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to, put that together is kind of refreshing and newer that I think that if it were to win, you know, more of these awards, people might start taking it more seriously or mm -hmm. see it through, you know, the eyes of someone like you or I who really is like this movie is very well deserving and that's kind of what makes it so great. Right. And and I am with you with Triangle of Sadness. I thought that movie was a roller coaster uh -huh. of a ride and cuz it, it just twisted in ways that I'd never saw coming <laughs> and it had like that comical uncomfortableness to it because I saw it with my mom who's usually not into something like that but she even liked it a lot too uh -huh. so like to me that's always kind of how I balance whether I think a movie is as good as I think it is as if she likes it because mm. usually she is I think I get a lot of my movie taste from her but she liked that movie a lot I'm glad it's getting the nominations um, but yeah, definitely the biggest of the underdogs. Um, I, I can understand why Avatar Way of the Water got the nomination because it made a bajillion dollars. Yeah. And the filmmaking craft involved in that is spectacular. Um, but I don't think even though Top Gun is up here or Avatar is in here that it's going to be the blockbuster's time to shine. Yeah. I, I think everything everywhere is going to take it. Um, I've been following the Academy Awards on um, like the Vegas odds for the last few months, and I watched everything everywhere go from being like eighth in line as an underdog to where they're heavy favorites now. Mm -hmm. Like as they've been ticking off award shows, and um, again though, just like the Stephen thing, like I want to see the Fablemans win. I do mm -hmm. because I, I think it's an incredible and personal film, but. Everything everywhere is just a juggernaut, and the, I don't, just don't see anything stopping it. And mm -hmm. I'm very pleased if that's going to end up being how the result will be as well. Yeah, Hopefully, we'll it see. ends up being delivered smoothly, and it doesn't happen <laughs> to have like a La La Land moonlight incident or anything like that. Ah. And, and they can get their proper due. But mm. I, I definitely think everything everywhere all at once is going to end up taking the crown for this one for sure. I think that's the consensus. I think a lot of people are really starting to get on board with that too, which is nice. Yeah, and so. and, I, and I think what's important too is kind of like what you were saying. I was like, if it wins, it lets more of these movies get seen. It mm -hmm. lets more of these movies get made. And it, and it helps kind of grow those audience. Now, I I would love if it was the way it used to be where when a movie got good reviews, everyone would go and see it. But that's just not the reality of the theater industry anymore. So mm -hmm. now I would almost argue these award shows are more important because a lot of people will not watch a film at all until it wins the big award. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, well, now i got to go check that out. Let's see, I, some movies that I haven't heard of, like Living and um, Causeway, I'll check out because they get nominated. And... It, and it's not even really that I didn't see to begin with, I, because out of choice, like one, it didn't even come here. Neither of those did, and they're mm. kind of hard to seek out on streaming. But, but like, not everyone's gonna watch and and everything everywhere in theaters. But once it wins, it'll encourage them to to watch that. And I think yes. the more those kind of smaller movies that still have so much passion behind it and great filmmaking, the more people that watch them, the more the audience grows and then the next film can be bigger. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of the way you got to aim for it now. Um, 
so I'm really happy for him. And I'm I'm glad Top Gun Maverick got nominated too, just because I also love that film. But <laughs> I, like I said, I just don't think it's the blockbusters year yeah. to win. If it did, if it does though, that is an upset. I've it, heard I one of my coworkers is really rooting for that movie. She's a big Top Gun fan, and yeah. I know that that's a movie that was made for the fans, and they did a great job. Yeah, and they delivered. So. Um, I mean, I got to thank um, Regal Cin- Cinema for having the collectible Top Gun Maverick popcorn bucket because <laughs> that, that, that made it a lot nicer when I would go to see a film. But, mm. um, yeah, so that's pretty much the, the rundown of the major Oscars categories. Obviously, there's several more categories that we didn't end up getting to, um, including, like, the short films, or anything like that but that doesn't mean not to watch them they're all great we just didn't have that much time and that's going to do it for this very special edition of real good movies thank you for joining me and thank you kylie for joining um hopefully you had a great time mm. uh, make sure to catch all of the oscar nominated short films at the cinema center and continue to support your local nonprofit theater and we will end the episode with a sneak preview of an interview with the director, writer, and producer for one of those nominated short films that's playing at the Cinema Center this weekend. Once again, I'm Will Beeman, and thank you for joining. But uh, the first one uh, that I want to kind of talk about while we're talking about the structure of the show is just the talk from the final episode, I think it is, that your, your dad, I'm assuming, gave you, and I'm assuming that was based off of your real life talk with him was it as awkward in reality as it was in the show because i feel i felt like i was a teenager all over again when <laughs> was sitting through that yeah i did well i didn't get to actually rip my ears off which probably would have felt better <laughs> yeah um yeah no, no that's that's how that all went down and and we've cut some for time uh he said other things and yeah you know <laughs> it's interesting the story went it, like what has kept true through all of this is that i have still officially i have the worst sex talk anyone has ever had in the history of sex talks and <laughs> i think now like you know you always feel that way when you're a teenager like it's never going to be worse than this but i think now we have officially globally proven <laughs> this is a bad day this was a bad day <laughs> gosh i love movies